Mother says, we are the sons and daughters of our motherland. We are to marry from its soils. Too foreign to fit in, we are the children of the ocean. The waves sway us between African territories and Europe. Some days I see home in the eyes of my relatives, others in the rainy summers of England. I don't pick up the phone to call Afaf, afraid my tears will unsettle her. Ana ummik, u uchtik, u sahbatik. I try to find sisters in friends, but my friends already have sisters. See comfort in my bedroom. The more I'm here, the more the walls draw in closer, forcing me to pack my bag, travel from city to city, hoping to find home under a random bus shelter or a country road in the suburbs. Aeroplanes give me comfort. The sky belongs to its creator. I wonder what Allah has promised me. So my name is Esma Al-Badawi and I'm a spoken word poet and a basketball player. Um, I grew up in Bradford, even though I was born in Sudan. And um, for many years I've wrote poetry. I use it to express myself about the things that I don't understand about the world and the things that I do understand about the world. And poetry for me was one of those things that I did like privately. I didn't like to share with anyone because I felt like it was very personal. And growing up, I was the student in class that always had red markings on my um, books because I just couldn't spell. And the words that I couldn't spell were all words I should have learned to spell by my age. And it really put me off of academic uh, work. So I disliked writing. I disliked going up on, um, in, in the front of the classroom and sort of writing anything on the board because I felt so scared of being laughed at. And I did get laughed at quite a lot because my spelling was that bad. Um, the teachers would always tell me that I needed to try harder, uh, that I wasn't trying hard enough, and that because I wasn't trying hard enough, I would probably fail. And there were times at school where the teachers would tell me that, you know, you're not going to get your GCSEs English or your English literature, and actually you're not going to get anywhere in life. But what I actually ended up doing was, in my spare time, I would go away and I would write poetry, and I just wouldn't show it to anyone because if you don't show it to anyone, no one can put red markings <laughs> on your pages and tell you that your spelling is wrong. Um, so mostly tonight, I'm going to actually share my poems because I feel like they tell more about me than just standing here and, uh, and speaking about it. But in 2015, I actually decided to start sharing my work with people. So I entered a competition with BBC One Extra and The Roundhouse, and my, I was selected to be the words first Leeds finalist, which I was really, really shocked about because I just wrote these poems and I never really had the courage to share them with anyone. And during the first few days of like the program, uh, I was told by one of the mentors that you know you need to be, you need to believe in yourself a lot more. And I think for me, this talk is about believing in yourself, even if you can't spell things and even if you don't really quite do things the way it, they're supposed to be done. Um, so I'm going to share my poems with you now. Um, this poem in particular is about eating disorders, and it's something that I've been through. And I think, yeah, the poem exp explains it a lot better than me. <laughs> it's just you and I dining. And no matter how hard I try to digest you, I just can't. My bones are starting to scratch beneath the surface of my skin. My mind flickers in the company of others. I count the hours and days since I last engulfed you. There's victory in holding out longer. Long enough for them to hear me silently cry out for help. I'm too much of a coward to slit so I restrict to drown out the trauma. If I can't control my life, then hopefully this will help me leave sooner. Or at least ward off their glances. Ever since that first drop of blood, my body has belonged to the consumers. Billboards, music videos, and ads with perfect abs, gaps between thighs and bubble butts. Every season brings with it a new trend. Are you a contender? Do you have what it takes to keep changing with the times and get the man willing to bid the highest price to purchase a commodity? Or do you want to remain disposable and replaceable? 
So you keep up. Girl, you keep up with every trend, take on every fad, die and exit every piece of fat from beneath your skin. Cut your hair, dye it, relax it, extend it, nip and tuck away at your every imperfection. Question your beauty in every mirror reflection. Wonder if you're enough, if they'll ever like you, if they'll ever love you. So I dine with you, but I can't eat you. There's too much at stake. Um, my last piece, uh, there, was, there was a phase in my life where I really wanted to explore gender. So I was exploring what it meant to be a woman for ages. And then I thought, Do you know what, I want to explore what it meant to be a man. So um, from my perspective, I'm not saying that I'm right, but anyway. <laughs> uh, so I'm probably going to end with this poem. Um, it's called Boys Will Be Boys. Don't let them strip you of your masculinity. Their absent father said, as if your masculinity could be shaken, torn up and given back to you in pieces. Society teaches boys from a young age to master their fragility with toughness, shames them whenever they display emotional weakness. He held me, challenged me to look him in the eyes and tell him what is a man without his pride. The same eyes that have been dry for so long, I can feel the knots in his chest that tie him and choke him and cause his mind to race with endless thoughts deep into the night. A man without his pride is courageous, knows that he's a man no matter what. It takes a man in a man to open up, forgive those that tried to destroy him even before he created his own path from boyhood to manhood. He must break the cycle. Search for the vulnerability within and let those tears flow. For how long will we force men to feel foreign inside their own bodies, restricting their self-expression to anger while they hemorrhage on the inside and reach for their fists to remind others they have the upper hand, the upper hand that knows no mercy, only demands, rapes, abuses, destroys, and when the damage is done, we place the shame and the blame on women and claim boys will be boys. I just wanted to end with um, all the poems that I've read today, they're all a part of me. Each poem that I share with the world is something that has changed me in some way, like it's something that I've had to go through and the result of that is this poem. And for me, poetry is like therapy. Whatever I write, I then release into the world and then I get on with my life and things are great again. Um, <laughs> but um, overall, I just want to say that um, I hope that you can all go out into the world and find your voices in the words that you can't spell as well. Thank you very much. Thank you.